So basically today we are going to walk you through different types of the dogs which we have. We specifically set up different things here so you can have a look at different domes which we have. Uh, we are going to walk you through a 3 meter diameter open face dome which is one of our best sellers. We are going to show you more details on this 8 meter diameter dome frame and we are going to give you a real life tour and real performance in the 10 meter diameter dome. With projection. Yeah, yes, with projection. So uh, we want to start with the very, very basic, right? So we want to go with um, the first um, setup which we have of 8 meter diameter dome. So you can see here uh, the uh, color coded poles and special type of the connectors which we have. So basically, what we don't know is very proud of is that our system uh, of uh, pins and connectors and special poles is so easy to use and so easy to install. It's kind of a Lego thing. I always give this kind of um, uh, you know comparison. It's very easy to install for just two people basically, like our team which is very experienced in installations and had numerous of installations all over the world. Basically, even two people can uh, install 8 meter diameter dome. You will need uh, several more people just uh, for a couple of minutes to lift it up, lift up the dome, and also some help with the outer covers and the screens. But for the frame, it's so easy to use, like we have a couple of connectors. Tatiana will show you some. Yeah. So we don't need any screws, we don't need any bolts, we don't need any instruments, nothing. So it's just the connector, which is extremely uh, strong and very lightweight pole, which is aluminum. And yeah, you just click in the um, holes into connectors. The connectors we have only two types of them, so that's why it's not really you know complicated to figure out which one you need to use right now. So basically, when you start to set up the dome, the frame of the dome, it's really loose, but when you click in the last pole and the last connector, it becomes really rigid, yeah, and it's really strong. So this 8 meter diameter dome is um, originally designed for indoor installations, but because of the materials which we are using, uh, we went through structural reports, and basically with the good weather conditions, the same dome can be installed outdoors. Originally for the outer frame we used polyester cover for indoor installations, but this frame can withstand even PVC outer cover, which is much heavier. And at the same time, it's 100% uh, uh, waterproof. So can be, even in rains, even in nasty weather conditions, you can still have this dome outside. One more important thing for the outdoor installations is that um, you will need to have a uh, good ballast for the uh, for the dome bottom. Like you can see here that the dome bottom is specifically designed, and we have the uh, 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 ballast plates which are connected through to the frame, and then afterwards you put the specific ballast so you can anchor the dome to the uh, ground. Yeah. So uh, I think. Um, uh, like the, the frame itself, it's, uh, the weight of it is around 150 kgs, which is really like, you know, not really heavy. And uh, it packs up in several bags, so it's easy to transport. Basically, you don't even need a minivan or something to be able to transport this uh, dome from one location to another. I think it's just a you know, bigger car, um, something like this. So. Yeah, uh, for the outdoors installations, uh, we can also use the aluminum connectors, not plastic connectors, but aluminum connectors, which will give more like rigid structure and will be more strong in terms of uh, wind loads um, and uh, basically can go through uh, any, uh, any weather conditions, but like not severe hurricane. So uh, this dome comes, like this specific dome comes with one single entrance, but we can also do 8 meter diameter dome with two doors as well. This is mostly required for fire safety requirements in different countries and also it's really good when you want to arrange like flow of people from one door to another. So we'll uh, go back to that um, on 10 meter diameter dome. Um, what else about 
it's uh, pretty, uh, like again, 8 meter diameter dome is one of our best sellers, you know, because it, uh, the height of the dome is uh, 5.2 meters. So basically it can fit into any uh, indoor spaces like shopping mall areas um, and many other things. So pretty much this is really uh, very handy because you can uh, install it outdoors, you can install it indoors, you can install it um, uh, for several days because the setup will take just several hours or you can leave it for a couple of weeks as well. So it's kind of versatile. So if you guys have any questions right now about this 8 meter diameter dome, I'm here to answer all of them. Okay, so we don't have any questions uh, for now, but we're still here for the next um, uh, hour to be able to answer all of the questions which you have. Okay? Yeah. So <laughs> right now Tanya will give you the information about the 3 meter diameter dome. Yeah, so we would like to move to another spot in our warehouse where we installed 3 meter diameter open dome and 3 meter dome goes only in open configuration uh, and it can be installed on trucks as you can see here or it can be suspended from the ceiling. Here are the connectors and poles from this dome. You see how easy it is just to install. I would say that one person with almost none of experience can set up this dome with our cool video manuals. Yeah, and uh, here you can see uh, the entire setup, not just the frame. Uh, you can see outside cover, screen. Can you go into this? So this is basically how it looks as, as fully set up. Yeah, so uh, here uh, again, like we want to talk more about the negative pressure technology, mm -hmm. right? So we yes. want to show how it really works because we have a lot of questions. How negative pressure technology is different from the standard screens which are used in uh, dome theaters, planetariums. So our main idea was uh, from the very beginning to uh, produce dome screens which will be really easy to set up, very mobile and more affordable than aluminum perforated screens. So we can show you right now how actually the screen and outside cover fits together. They fit together with just velcro. And if I like unlock, uh, unzip, unfasten it here, you can see the frame inside. And you can see the screen is slowly going down because we removed the negative pressure. And right now, we're going to show you how the system actually works. Mm -hmm. uh, Yana, can you help me and turn off the fan which is at the back and you, we will show you the entire process of how the screen goes up again so so Yana just turned off the fan and you can see that the uh, uh, screen is slowly going down so also oh. very slowly <laughs> So we also have uh, a lot of uh, questions in terms of like if uh, there is no power or something like this, how the negative pressure mm -hmm. screen is going to work. Basically this screen is attached with the special straps to the frame of the dome. So even if there is a uh, blackout and you have uh, no power uh, in your facility, then it doesn't mean that the screen is going to fall on you. It's going to stand still on suspended. the frame, it will be suspended anyway, but it will just become loose so you can see that it's not ideal shape, you cannot use it for the projection right now, right? So we can see that the screen is going down a little bit, it becomes loose, but it still stays up, so there is no worries about, you know, damage of falling the screen or yeah. something like this. Sometimes for smaller installations, uh, what is really important is that when the screen is back to normal again, you sometimes don't even need to recalibrate, you don't yeah. need to change the projection setup because the screen will take the same shape as it was before. So it's really handy if you had some, you know, some problems with the grid Yeah, as you can see right now, the screen is slowly going down. We can, like, it's super loose right now. Yeah, and uh, Jana, maybe we'll show where the fan actually is located. Let's go around the dome yeah, and we'll show it to you. So this is the fan. For this model, uh, it's installed inside the cover, 
because it's super small. For bigger domes, it's like a separate uh, fan standing on, on the floor or located on the truss, depending on the setup. setup. So right now, we'll turn on the fan and we'll see how the screen will go up. So it was just a matter of seconds here because it didn't fully went down but uh, even if it really deflated it will be also just a matter of minutes for this dome size for bigger domes like 8 meter or 10 meter it can take up to 30 40 minutes depending on the dome size yeah so for bigger domes as well like 20 meters then because we manufacture negative pressure screens of different sizes so the biggest one so far was 35 meters in diameter. So basically, uh, we can use a couple of um, uh, fans for creating negative pressure for bigger zones as well. So let's say um, when we were using the, the uh, we were using two fans for 20 meter diameter zone in Masan Robotland theme park, Xinhua um, World on Jeju Island. So basically, the time when you're using two uh, fans, the time for the first the initial lifting up the dome will be around 30 minutes. Then afterwards, you can turn off one fan yeah. and have another one just to support the negative pressure between the outside cover and the screen. So it consumes the energy of maybe a couple of mm -hmm. uh, bulbs, you know, not more. It's really um, uh, like eco friendly and you don't need a lot of power. Yeah, usually the power consumption of the fan is about 200-300 watts, which is like nothing and uh, there is not much energy consumption even if, if you run it 24-7, which we recommend. Uh, another thing that I wanted to mention about the fan is that we usually install two or three of them just in case one uh, malfunction, dysfunction stops working, another one can be used uh, as a backup until the other one is fixed. So this is also, we always supply for bigger domes, because for small domes, like usually it's not a problem, but uh, for bigger domes, uh, we always provide uh, two fans, uh, yes. or three fans for backup. And for fixed installations as well, uh, if one of the fans is not working, then automatically the second one, the backup one, yeah. can start working, so you're still not losing the negative pressure between the layers, and the screen is still working okay. You can, uh, like in, our manuals we usually give for the information like the initial for your maintenance crew if it's a fixed installation if it's a big installation for the maintenance crew when you come to the dome first like the, the only maintenance you will need to give to the dome structure is just to see like to have a look visually you know if it's not deformed if it's nice and cool and the screen is really cohesive no wrinkles or anything so basically when you have a look at the good functioning like well functioning dome then you won't even be able to say that it's actually that's actually fabric, that it's not a hard shell dome, right? So everything which you need to do is come over, check it, then check the fan, and uh, pretty much you know the switch between the fan which is not working, let's say, will be done automatically. Yeah, another thing that I wanted to mention that uh, you can see here a single uh, single pipe truss because uh, for we don't usually use smaller projectors that uh, are super light and easy but if uh, for some reason we need a higher resolution or bigger projector uh, we can uh, manufacture custom uh, truss which can be two or three pipe truss and provide it for the customers mm -hmm. so if you guys have any questions about swimming ball feel free to ask and we'll answer them uh, later and now we are ready to move to... Yes, yeah. I want to mention one more thing about the like tilt of this dome. Mm -hmm. as, you can have, uh, as you can see right now, we have this open face dome which is tilted, right? So basically, uh, uh, this setup for the tilted screen, uh, we use for both open face dome, like 3 meter dome, or let's say 8 meter dome, which doesn't have screen right now, but obviously it can be done also with the angle, right? So why we are doing this? We are doing this to um, increase the uh, field of view uh, in front of your visitors. So basically this setup, this tilted dome screen is designed for people to come over, sit down their back a little bit reclined and have 
wider and bigger field of view in front. So basically, the back of the tilt, uh, the back, uh, the tilt of uh, the back of the seat is repeating the tilt of the uh, screen. And uh, again, uh, with uh, this truss and with the, you know, when we suspend the domes from the ceiling, we basically can play with the tilt as well. The same three meter diameter dome can be installed like this for people to come over and see that. But if you want, let's say, flying experience uh, option, then the same screen can be installed on bigger tilt or even on 90 degrees like this. So you have motion seats or something like this and really provide people, you know, some custom experience, a flying experience where you want people to just walk in and stand near the dome. They will have this immersive feeling, immersive vision. Uh, with the same tilt. So it's really versatile with the open face dome. We can play with different tilts and we can install it in different directions and, and different angles. Unfortunately, we can't show you all uh, possible screen types in our facility today, but we have a uh, blog post on our website and video on YouTube where you can see uh, all the differences between uh, possible screen types, like Jana mentioned tilted screen, non tilted screen screen direct uh, up to the floor, mm -hmm. flying cinema, so if you're interested or, um, or want to understand uh, the difference and get more details, please go to our YouTube channel and check this video and check the uh, article on our blog, mm -hmm. on the website. Yeah, or you, you can always reach out to our sales team, you know, to find out like any technical question about the screen, about the projection, about types of the trusses or many other things. But sometimes we come across, um, you know, some of the things when you think that the dome or dome screen is not really suitable for your project. But basically, you know, with the experience we had, we were using domes for yoga sessions, for expos, for festivals, for uh, presentations for kids, for, you know, like so many versatile things. So basically, we can always find the solution how to set up the dome, how to arrange the projection system, what type of content to use, how to work with the outside light and many other things uh, to be really able to provide and uh, give you the most uh, suitable solution to the project which you're thinking of. So, again, if you have any questions, let us know and we'll answer them. And now we are moving to uh, 10 meter dome. So this dome, as Jana mentioned, uh, has two entrances. One is uh, over here, and, then, and another one is 144 degrees. Maybe we can move it right now. Okay. So this dome has uh, no tilted screen. Okay. And no tilted screen. So and the screen is installed at around two meters above the ground level. Uh, as you can see, we have this uh, fabric, uh, technical zone over here, which, is, which has black fabric, and the screen itself is uh, made from gray projection screen. So. Uh, we have uh, outlets for ventilation or air conditioning, as you can see here. Uh, there are standard two uh, outlets for air conditioning and ventilation in 10 meter domes, but uh, we can make custom uh, amount and custom sizes for these ports upon request if needed. Also, we have uh, several technical outlets as well for cables and stuff. And uh, outside uh, there is uh, another outlet for the fan. And maybe let's go around and we'll show you how fan works for this zone size. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's use another door. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. the 
outside part of the data. Yeah, so let's go back in and we'll talk about projection system. resolution which you are going to have out of uh, eight projectors, full HD projectors, will be 4K. It's actual 4K resolution. It means that we are calculating the pixels uh, without talking about the overlaps of the projectors, which you can see right now on the screen. You specifically uh, leave it here right now. Yeah? So, yeah, you can see the overlaps of the projectors here, and basically when we're calculating units and we're calculating the pixels on the dome, you uh, will never calculate those which are doubled on, on the overlaps, right? And the eight projector setup, eight foolish projector setup, proved itself to be really very efficient uh, projection setup. So, basically, the image is going to be even much better, you know, using eight foolish projectors than using, you know, two 4K projectors. It depends on the model, of course, it depends on the brightness, it depends on what are you going to, uh, how you are going to use your domes. Uh, but uh, yeah, pretty much a projector setup is one of our, you know, one of our standard setups and uh, gives really good uh, uh, image quality, gives a really good brightness and not that hard for the installation as well. Uh, like um, one reason is of course, like, and the main reason is of course our, our uh, fully automatic calibration, right? So uh, we basically don't care how many projectors we need to, you know, uh, calibrate together because it's fully automatic. But of course, let's say for the festival setup, you want to have nice image, you want to have bright colors, but at the same time, you don't want to have a lot of hassle with the installation of main projectors. Like, well, sometimes it's needed for 10 meter diameter. That's, that's more than enough. So we are using here, like uh, Tatiana showed you the truss, like one sheet truss on 3 meter diameter dome. Uh, we can customize the truss and depending on the weight and the size of the dome, we can do two uh, pipes, three pipes truss, but here we are using the stents. Again, it's a totally mobile and very, to e a very easy to install uh, setup. So we're using just the stents because they protect the projectors pretty well, but at the same time, you don't need to have this heavy, you know, round structure around the whole perimeter of the dome. So that's the, like, eight stands, or like the same as you would have, let's say, legs of the truss as well. So for, for mobile setup, several days, it's like perfect for, you know, heavy needs. So if you guys want to know something, some specific questions or, you know, some specific information about the projection system, I'm here to answer. Uh, we can show you right now the uh, geometry calibration tree. Yeah. So this is how the perfect calibration looks. Yeah. 
again for the uh, calibration uh, for, for calibration process uh, it's totally automatic uh, what we do is we use for the camera with fish lens we set it up in the center of the dome we connect it with the uh, cable to a media server you push one button on uh, uh, ipad pretty much that's it yeah, you just need to wait and have your coffee or anything we go through several stages of calibration you can see right now that let's say when we're talking about calibration of colors yeah because this is one of the really important features which helps us to get the bright and colorful image on the dome even using regular home projectors so your initial calibration will be just the geometry the grid which you saw a couple of seconds ago, but right now we're talking about more uh, extended version of the calibration and it's calibration of colors. So usually all engineers will do that at the initial setup. Uh, if everything is okay, if everything is working, you don't need to do it again yourself. But uh, if you want to dive deeper into calibration and projection stuff and everything, our team also will be able to give you training and information about how it works. For the sound system, we're using here uh, GBL speakers. It's a 5.1 uh, sound system. Again, because it's festival set up, we want it to be uh, more, you know, like powerful, but at the same time, not really disturbing others. And uh, again, for the sound systems, it's really easy to uh, customize anything. We can work with any brand, with any setup, uh, like surround sound, uh, stereo sound. Sometimes our clients want to use uh, headphones. So everything is possible to work with directional sounds as well, but it's usually working in the enclosed domes, not the open ones. Uh, we have some solutions for the uh, sound and thermal insulation in between of the domes, which also helps to work with the sound inside of the dome. Maybe right now you can hear my voice is a little bit echoing, because it's just the, you know, just the screen and just the outer cover, nothing else. But ideally, the dome setup is really, it's an interesting place for um, working with sound as well, you know, because it's like it's a dome shape, it's more like a cathedral or something like this. So. Uh, um, achieving good sound in this environment is really like easy and but you just need to know how to make it so it's, it's, it's a perfect thing and it really adds on to the whole video experience so you can see that the server that runs this dome and eight five thousand lumens quite powerful projectors is just like, I don't know, it can easily be uh, brought as a carry-on, you can bring it like as your laptop <laughs> to the location. Uh, so this is the server, uh, but it's quite powerful, though it's quite small. Uh, this is the Wi-Fi router that uh, is needed to connect the system and control the entire setup. And basically this is the entire hardware that we have that's running for control uh, of the system. And uh, as you can see, you don't need huge technical room for mobile setups. You can uh, accommodate everything inside the dome. For professional setups, for a fixed installation, we do recommend technical room, but it won't take like too much space. Again, our systems don't uh, um, consume too much power. For example, this setup, which is, has eight projectors, sound system, server, uh, it will need only five kilowatts of power. amazing system <laughs> yeah and also another thing about uh, the uh, like heart of the system and control server is that it can be installed in the same location like inside of the dome as well you know like for festivals or, or when we're dealing let's say with a lot of kids you know for for uh, events and something like this yes we will try to put it somewhere so nobody can reach it but basically you don't need to have any outside area which is air conditioned for uh, supervised security and all those things everything is installed here and you know like uh, those people who operate the dome they can also take care of the of this room as well we all, all always uh, have questions about like uh, who can run the dome who can operate the dome and basically what uh, uh, because the system is so easy and so user-friendly we just need a computer-friendly person you know 
to be able to run the dome, maintain the dome, and even you know do some troubleshooting, like initial troubleshooting. If you connect this server to uh, internet, then afterwards our team remotely can check what is happening with the server. We can uh, put new licenses inside for, for your content. We can upload uh, new content as well. We can see what's happening with the server in terms of you know uh, like maintenance, troubleshooting, or something like this. So it's uh, yeah perfect setup for, for those who don't want to be a dome professional, you know, like, uh, but really, um, like, the feedback which we're getting from the clients is, like, you know, really well, and amazed how easy it is to set up, starting from the dome frame to the projection system to maintenance operation, and working with us as well. So, just a, a few more words about the servers that we have. So, this is not the smallest server that we um, offer. So the smaller server, we call it nano server, and it's just like the size of an iPad, I would say. And uh, for smaller setups, like for 3 meter dome, we mount it directly on the truss. So for 3 meter dome, you can mount entire setup, except for the subwoofer, on the truss. So uh, basically, no any, um, no any area or anything else is needed for the equipment, it's just the truss. So it's self-sustainable unit with all equipment mounted on the dome itself. So, and now, um, uh, please let us know if you have any questions. If not, uh, we'll do some show time for you guys and show you some amazing shows from our studio. Yeah, so uh, one more small thing. Uh, it's not about projection uh, system or dome, let's say, but this is what is uh, one of the uh, hot sellers right now the festival setups as well, it's our bin bags which are also manufactured by Full Dome Pro in our uh, uh, facility here in Chiang Mai. Uh, remember I talked about the tilt of the uh, screen and 3 meter diameter dome and I said that the uh, back of the seat should be repeating the tilt of the screen basically. So those uh, bin bags are providing the, re the really like nice and most uh, suitable tilt for the uh, uh, back of the tilt for the screens as well. So when you sit up, uh, sit down, sorry, <laughs> then you know you can adjust yourself and really like everything which you see around the screen. So it's really comfortable. And another good thing about it is that when we're shipping it to the festivals or to some different locations, we can ship just the outer cover and the pins itself you can get locally anywhere. So it means like that, let's say we shipped recently like 40. Uh, been back to London for one of the exhibitions. I mean, it was before COVID times, uh, obviously. So it was really a small pack, and the beans were purchased and reused afterwards uh, locally in, a, in the UK. So, yeah, we have a first question. Um, do we offer motion simulation seats uh, that go with our domes? Oh, well, that's one of my favorite uh, projects, I <laughs> think. Yes, we do. Um, uh, installations with the motion seats as well and this is really you know one of the most exciting attractions which we I think the whole our, our team visited. We do flying theaters with motion seats, we do um, uh, 3D uh, uh, dome theaters or 4D dome theaters as they call it. So basically our system is uh, can be integrated with any uh, motion seat provider with any technology for the motion seat as well and basically it's really important uh, that the, uh, there is a very easy synchronization of video and audio with the motion seats uh, uh, and also with the effects uh, which uh, the uh, motion seats have. So this is one of the most wanted attractions as I uh, call it. So basically it's kind of an evolution or revolution of the uh, standard 4D cinemas but we equipped it not with the standard you know, uh, flat screen or panoramic screen but with the dome screen as well. We have several uh, very uh, uh, nice installations all over the world. And basically, you can, uh, again, like on our website and showcases, you can have a look at the theme park uh, solutions presentations, and you can also have a look at what are the uh, most significant. One of the most significant motion seat uh, installation was on Jeju Island uh, uh, for Xinhua World theme park. It was done with our partner, CF Corporation. We had a 20 meter diameter dome and we had 130 seats with the reclined back, which was reclining when you sit down. It's a great project and it was really like a game changer for uh, us as a provider and also for 
or a key part of the history as well, I think. Yeah, so, and we have more uh, cases on our YouTube, you can yeah, go so and check. Yeah, so on YouTube, and, uh, there are more cases, like we did a, a huge flying theater project uh, uh, for Masan Robotland, uh, together with the media nation uh, company from the from US, and we had the uh, motion seats, and we have the uh, 20 meter diameter screen, which was on top of 90 degrees. Move directly to the screen, um, and we have several more projects coming with uh, different other suppliers, and some of them are flying theaters, and this is, uh, you know, one of the most exciting attractions as well. So there is one question, no, no question, but uh, just comment about wisdom. Mm -hmm. uh, people miss wisdom, and um, of course, uh, wisdom also misses <laughs> all the parties, events, and everything is fine. We're just waiting for. Um, I don't know, this COVID madness uh, go over and we'll start having events back there again. So, And we'll bring you some uh, wisdom magic here today and show you some uh, full of shows so that you can enjoy uh, uh, safety social distance for people. Yeah, so that's it for now. Like, uh, feel free to uh, ask me questions. We'll show some
was uh, done by Liquid Art uh, Studio in collaboration with uh, 360 Art. Uh, so yeah, please check them out uh, on their website, Liquid Art, and uh, enjoy the show.
so much for everyone who watched our uh, live stream. If you if you have any question questions after you watched it and uh, been recorded, please uh, send us messages on Instagram, comment under the post, or send us messages uh, messages or emails to info at Google Pro. Thank you very much uh, for, for those who joined and. Uh, yeah, so we're also like uh, trying to uh, find the topics which uh, uh, can be interesting for you about Delmus projection system content, you know, usages, our team, whatever is um, you know interesting for you. And uh, like you know, the Dom setup was one of the uh, questions like which we constantly receive as uh, salespeople, you know, to our uh, uh, um, emails and you know requests from the website. So our website and our YouTube channel has a, will have a lot of information for uh, you know the frequently asked questions and many other things. So you can go there and also like we're here for you all the time to you know just to chat to find out about technical questions to get advice to ask how we're doing. So yeah, just don't hesitate to reach out. Really. If you have any topics that you would like us to cover in the coming streams. Also send us messages on all possible pod platforms where we are, and we'll um, schedule it for next uh, live streams. Yeah, we'll have. So thanks again uh, very much. You guys have a good night, day, morning, yeah, weekend, weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and see you soon. Yeah, we're done for today. Bye. Bye. Bye.